The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theater Incorporated, presents Eddie Meets the Family, starring Gloria DeHaven and Richard Hart. Hoagie Carmichael is your host. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. One of the great joys in life is to have a definite and useful goal to work towards. It's like going on a journey when you know you have a valuable and worthwhile end in view. And that's the story of every boy and girl starting out and getting married. And they have one of the most wonderful goals in the world, making a home, making a happy home together and giving security to their family. Yes, and if sometimes it's tough going because they have to start without many of the things they'd like to have, things that they can't hope to get without hard work and sacrifice, it's good for these people to remember that one of life's great joys can be working together for that home they have planned to build. And it's good for all of us to remember that we don't have to do it alone either. We can have the most powerful help in all of our work. We can have that help just for the asking. Prayer. Family prayer that should find a place in every home. Because with God's help, there's joy and happiness in working together, especially working towards the most wonderful goal in the world, a happy home. Hoagie Carmichael will return following tonight's family theater story, Eddie Meets the Family, starring Gloria DeHaven and Richard Hart. This is the story of Eddie and Francis. It's the story of a family in a big city. It might have taken place in San Francisco, New Orleans, or Chicago. Actually, it happened in the Bronx. Isn't this wonderful chop suey, Eddie? I think Chin Lee's is about the best in the Bronx. I just love chop suey, don't you, Eddie? Yeah. Well, then why don't you eat it, Eddie? I've been thinking. What about? You. Me? Mm-hmm. Francie, will you marry me? Eddie. Gosh, I don't know what to say. We we practically just met. Why, Francie, it's nearly a month. Besides, what's time got to do with it if you love me? Oh, I do love you, Eddie. Honest. I never felt like this about anyone before, but... Well, well, it seems we've known each other for, for such a short time, and... I got a reason for rushing you, Francie. You see, something very important's come up. Something very important? How? I've been offered a promotion, but it means I've got to be transferred out west, San Francisco. San Francisco? Yeah, that's my home, Francie. You know, I got this job in New York when I came back from overseas. I never had any intention of staying here, though. Well, when would you have to leave? Two weeks. Two weeks? I want you to come back with me to San Francisco, Francie. Oh, oh gee, Eddie. Gee, let me think. Oh, well, that means I'd have to leave my family and... And all my friends. Well, I've lived in the Bronx all my life and... Well, well, after all, we'd be together, wouldn't we, Francie? Oh, of course, Eddie. I didn't mean it that way. You just took me by surprise. You know, my mother would never forgive me if I decided something so important without talking to her first. Yeah, I understand, Francie. I've been meaning to ask Eddie to come and meet them. Oh, they're really wonderful. Especially my mother. Of course, they've got their faults, but... Well, I'm very proud of them. I bet they're wonderful. When can we get together? Well, now, let's see. Tomorrow's Sunday. Well, how about tomorrow? Suppose you drop around in the evening about... Well, would 7 o'clock be all right? Okay, Francie. That's a day. Roger, will you hand me that picture over there? 
I'm taking down the dead ducks and putting up the ballet dancer from my room. What's the big idea? Oh, I hate those dead ducks. I'd be ashamed to have Eddie see them in our dining room. Pa's gonna yell bloody murder. Here. Thanks. Now take the ducks. Gee, all this fuss. What kind of a gink is Eddie, anyhow? He's not a gink. And I want you to be on your good behavior when he Roger, comes. Roger, I told you to empty the garbage. Francis, that picture. Your father will throw a fit. Maybe he won't notice it. Don't kid yourself. I'll put the dead ducks back after Eddie leaves. Ma, can I go to the paradise? Oh, all you've got in your mind is movies. Did you finish your homework? Yeah, except the algebra. Well, go upstairs and finish it right away. Answer the phone, Roger. Okay, I'll get it. Oh, Mother, Mother, you've still got on that old house dress. I've been so busy in the kitchen right up to this very minute. Gladys! Gladys! Telephone! Coming! I thought Gladys was going to help you, Mother. Oh, Gladys, she had to paint her nails, she said. Well, don't worry, I'll be ready in time for His Royal Highness. Francie, Tony just called. He wants to take me to a dance tonight. Well, you're not going, are you? I wouldn't take no for an answer. Oh, you're a fine sister. I asked you as a favor to stay home tonight and meet Eddie. Well, maybe he'll get here before I leave. Next time you ask a favor of me. Gee, Gladys, will you please take off that kimono? Supposing Eddie should I was come just and... getting ready, wasn't I? Gee, what are you so nervous about? You think you never entertained a boyfriend before? Eddie's different. You sure pulled a fast one telling Ma that Lorraine Trimble is an old friend of yours. You didn't think you'd get caught, huh? Well, where did you meet this guy, anyway? Well, I can't tell you now, Gladys. Mom, I... All right. Come on upstairs and tell me while I get dressed. So that's the way it was, Gladys. Eddie was at the office dance. Lorraine met him and danced with him, and... Well, then he asked me to dance, and... You mean he... he's a pickup? Well, gee, don't say it just that way. Some of the girls in the office asked him to come. But I didn't like to tell Mother the whole story. You, you know how she is about those things, and... Yeah. Uh, hand me that hairbrush, will you? Gee, Gladys, we fell for each other right off. He's so different from everyone I've ever met before. Honest, I... I just can't keep my mind off of him. Gee, you sure got a bad. Gladys... Eddie proposed to me last night. Proposed? Yes, at Chin Lee's. We were having dinner and... But, gee, you just met him practically. Nearly a month ago. Oh, did you tell Ma? Oh, not yet. I thought maybe I'd wait till she saw him first. I've been in a regular tailspin. I don't know what to do, honest. If anything should happen to spoil things, I... Oh, well, why should it? Well, there's a hitch. Eddie's going to be transferred to San Francisco, and he wants to take me with him. When? In two weeks. But, gee, Gladys, the thought of leaving New York and the family... Oh, it's got me all upset. Well, talk him out of it, can't you? I've tried to, but Listen, so... when a man's in love, he'll do anything if you handle him right. Oh, yes, but that doesn't seem... Well, I mean, it isn't fair. Ah, don't be crazy, Francie. I bet that's Eddie. Hello, Eddie. Hi, Francie. Here, give me your hat. Come on, let's go in the front room. Phew. It's warm today, isn't it? Yes, but it isn't the heat. It's the humidity. Uh, where are the folks? Well, my father's taking a nap, and my kid brother's doing his homework, and... Oh, well, they'll all be down shortly. Eddie? Eddie, you won't expect them to be, well, too high tone or anything. I wouldn't like them if they were. Here, some candy. Oh, gee, thanks, Eddie. Mm, sweet things for a pretty girl. Oh, you do look very pretty tonight, Francis. Oh, gosh, all compliments. And all dressed up, too. New suit, Eddie. Uh-huh. Oh, that's pretty classy. That's what I like about you, Eddie. You got class. Is that uh, all you like about me? Come here. Oh, no, Eddie, don't now. Really, not now. They might pop in and... <sighs> I'm crazy about you, Francie. Well, uh, uh, come on, Eddie. Come on and sit down. Well, you've got it fixed up real nice here, haven't you? Well, just wait till we have our own home. That'll be a knockout. Well, um, there's an apartment on the concourse, Eddie. It's, uh, it's going to be vacant in a month, and I know the manager, and she well, what said... What do we that... want with an apartment in the Bronx when we're going to San Francisco? Oh, you'll love it there, Francie. Well, gee, I, I just don't think I could love any place like New York. I guess it's only natural, though. I'm not intruding, am I? Oh, Eddie, I want you to meet my sister Gladys. Gladys, this is Eddie Springer. Oh, I've been dying to meet you, Eddie. That's all she's been talking about. It's Eddie this and Eddie that. And... Oh, sit down. You know you look just like a fellow I used to know, Joe Zeller. Don't you think he looks like Joe, Francie? Yeah, you look just like him, honest. Have some candy? Oh, thanks. He turned out to be an awful heel, though. Francis! Yes, Mother? Excuse me a minute. Turn on the radio, Gladys. 
What do you want, Mother? Oh, Frances, you'll just have to help me with these sandwiches if I'm ever going to get dressed. I asked Gladys, but you know how she is. All right, Mother, go ahead and dress. I'll do it. And put some powder on your nose. It's shiny. Oh, all right. Mother, Mother, take a peek through the door. I want you to see Eddie. I did. He's nice looking, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Art's better looking. Mother, M- Mother, I was going to wait, but maybe I'd better tell you now. Mother, Eddie proposed to me last night. What? He wants to marry me. But you hardly know him. Oh, but I do. Gee, it seems like years. Oh, my goodness. And we want to get married right away. What? Oh, I mean, he's leaving. He's leaving for San Francisco. He's being transferred. And he wants me to go with him. San Francisco? Way out there? Oh, Francis, would you want to live thousands of miles away from your mother and your family and, and all your friends? No, I wouldn't. But, oh, if I could only get him to give up the idea and stay here in New oh. York. Gee, Mother... I love him so, and I just don't know what to do. Oh, well, I, I, I'd better talk this over with your father. Well, yes, and hurry down. And mother, mother, listen, will you please tell Dad not to come down in his suspenders? Oh, yes, yes, I'll do that. Francis, Eddie isn't in there alone, is he? Oh, no, Gladys is entertaining him. Gladys, did anyone ever tell you that you looked like Lana Turner? <laughs> Everybody tells me that. You know, yesterday a customer was leaning over the counter. You know, at Macy's where I work. And he said, if I was a talent scout, I'd sign you up for Hollywood. You know, that's my dream, Eddie, to land in the movies. And you know, my lifeline says that I have a very fortunate future. What about your lifeline, Eddie? Let me see your hand. Gee, will you look at that lifeline? You're going to live forever. Hey, what do you know? Your heart line is just like mine. See, that, that means your head rules your heart. Gee, don't you love that piece? Come on, let's dance. Mmm, that's nice perfume. Kiss me. What? Uh, that's the name of the perfume. Oh. Say so you didn't think of me. Uh. <laughs> that's funny. Art gave it to me for my birthday. Well, who's Art? Your boyfriend? No, he's Francie's friend. Oh. Mm-hmm. Well, she never mentioned him to me. Oh, didn't she? Gee, you're a swell dancer, Eddie. What's she like? Who, Art? Mm. Well, for one thing, he's darn good looking. The folks are all crazy about him. He's almost like one of the family. Hey, see, do you know this, Dad? Watch, and I'll show you. Well, what's he do for a living? He's a window trimmer at Gimple's. Oh. Well, I see you two got off to a good start. Oh, he's cute, Francie. If he wasn't yours, I'd steal him from you. Uh-oh, that must be Tony now. Well, here's where I take a powder. Goodbye, Eddie. Nice meeting you. Come again soon, won't you? Well, how do you like Gladys? Oh, she's fine. Wonderful. Talks like a blue streak. Um, where's your mother? Oh, she went upstairs to wake up my father. Sit down, Eddie. Have some more candy? Frank. Frank, wake up. Hmm? Frank, wake up, wake up, wake up. <clears throat> What's the matter, Stella? Well, get dressed and come downstairs. Eddie's here. Eddie? Who's Eddie? Oh, you know, Frances' new boyfriend. Uh, all right. All oh, right. Frank, I'm so upset. He wants to marry her. Who? Eddie. He wants to marry Frances. Well, uh, this is pretty all of a sudden, isn't it? Oh, that's just it. We haven't even met him. And, and Frank, he wants to take her way out west to San Francisco. What? Less than two weeks. Oh, Frank, just the thought of it. Our little girl, miles and miles away from us, and we don't know anything about him. He was overseas and... Oh, dear. You, you hear such terrible uh, things. Stop uh, blubbering, Stella. Well, you know how I feel about Frances. She's such a comfort to me. And, and another thing, Frank. If Frances goes, how are we going to pay off that Chesterfield set we just bought? And the Frigidaire? They're not married yet. No, but she's crazy about him. She never acted like this before. Oh, she could only have fallen for art, steady and reliable, and, and he loves the Bronx. Yeah, well, <laughs> let me talk to him. Maybe I can change his mind uh, about leaving New York. Oh, I, I wish you could, Frank. Now, now, hurry up and get dressed and come down. I won't rest till you've seen him. And, and Frank, please wear your coat. It's too darn hot. Well, then take off your suspenders. Francis asked me to tell you. Oh, here's Mother now, Eddie. Mother, I want you to meet Eddie Springer. <laughs> this is a great pleasure, Mr. Springer. Call him Eddie, Mother. I've heard so much about you. I know now where Francie gets her good looks. What? Oh, oh thank you. Have some candy, Mother? Uh, your uh, home's out west, Francis told me. Yeah, San Francisco. Hmm. It's a great town. I got set up in a job when I returned from overseas, but, well, I could never make my home here in New York. Well, San Francisco's all right, but... Have you ever been there? 
Oh, but I've seen it in the movies. <clears throat> Swarm, isn't it? Yes, that's one thing I could never get used to, this New York heat. Oh, but you get those awful fogs in San Francisco, don't you? Yes, but, well, they're bracing. Worst thing for sinus trouble. We all suffer from sinus in this family. What's keeping father? Well, he's getting dressed, dear. He'll be down in a minute. Why don't you take Eddie out in the front porch and sit in the swing? It's much cooler out there. I'll make some coffee and we'll have some sandwiches. That's a good idea. Come on, Eddie. Look at those clouds, Eddie. I'll bet we're going to have a thunderstorm. Doesn't the L disturb you, keep you awake at night? Oh, I'm so used to that sound. I never notice it anymore. Francie, how come you never told me about Art? What do you mean? Just that. Well, there's nothing to tell. I understand he's giving you the rush act. Did Gladys tell you that? Gee, you know how she just talks on and on and... Well, you must encourage him a little or he wouldn't be so interested in you. Oh, I don't, Eddie. Honest, I don't. Gee, you ought to hear the way I tell him off. But it just doesn't do any good. He's the kind of person you can insult. No matter how you try. Oh, wise guy, huh? Yes. Sometimes I could scream. I'd like to meet that guy. Oh, forget it, Eddie. He isn't worth the trouble. Gee, can't you get it in your head that it's you, Eddie? I never even think of another fellow anymore. You certainly got a jealous disposition. Oh, I can't help it. It burns me up just to think of another fellow looking at you. Well, you've got nothing to worry about. Um, Eddie, hmm? maybe after a while we could take a little walk. Oh, Sure. On the concourse, and I'll uh, show you that apartment house I was telling you well, about. What do I want to see that for? Well, uh, the manager's a friend of mine, and, well, there's certainly no harm in looking in, is there? Francia! Oh, oh, excuse me. What do you want, Roger? Oh, Eddie, this is my kid brother, Roger. Hello, Roger. Hello. I thought you were doing your algebra. I was, but I got stuck. Are you good at algebra, Eddie? Used to be my best subject. Well, I wonder, maybe you could help me with Eddie it. didn't come here to do your homework for you. Don't you do it, Eddie. Mm. I wish Art was here. He's a whiz at algebra. Yeah, let me see that problem. Francie says you were real brainy. I guess I could do it if I put my, my mind on it. Roger, um, didn't you say you wanted to see that movie at the Paradise? Yeah, but I'm broke. Well, there's some money in my top drawer. And yeah, if no, 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 let, let me. Here, Roger. Gee, a dollar. Thanks, Eddie. Roger, you shouldn't do that. Gee, you're a regular guy, Eddie. Don't tell Ma, will you? No, it's just between us. Oh, Honest, Eddie, the more I see of you, the more I realize how wonderful you are. Here, uh, let me fix that cushion. Eddie, what are you thinking about? That job out west. Uh, Francis! Oh, here's my father, Eddie. Father, I want you to meet Eddie Stringer. Well, how do you do, sir? How do you do? Always glad to meet any of my daughter's friends. Well, thanks. <laughs> Warm, isn't it? Yeah, guess we're due for a thunderstorm. I can always tell I get pains in my joints. Uh, who's that, Francis, coming up the walk there? I can't... Oh, yes, it's Aunt Ollie. Hello there. Aunt Ollie, what a surprise. Hello, Ollie. Oh, hello, Frank. How are you? Fine. Aunt Ollie, I want you to meet my friend, Eddie Springer. Oh, glad to know you, Mr. Springer. Uh -huh. She's my father's sister. She's a school teacher. <laughs> well, don't look so scared, Mr. Springer. I won't put you in the corner. <laughs> well, Ollie. Oh, hello, Stella. It's about time you dropped around. It's almost a month no, since... No, it was two weeks Friday. Was it? Well, <laughs> uh, come on in, folks. The coffee's ready. <laughs> Try one of these minced ham sandwiches, Ollie. Oh, thanks. You'll look all in, Ollie. What's the matter? Oh, got a headache. I've been correcting geography papers all day. Who took down my picture? Oh, what did I tell you, Francis? Why, um, I, I did, Father. Well, of all... Why? Why did you take it down? Oh, Father, because I hate those dead ducks. Just to look at them takes your appetite away. They've been there for eight years, and I want them there. That picture was given to me by Malage. Now, Frank, she'll put it back. Don't make such a hullabaloo. Uh, Eddie, uh, will you have some more coffee? Uh, how's Gladys? Is she home? Uh, no, no, Ollie, she had a date. Who did she go out with? Uh, with, uh, with Tony. I told you I didn't want her to go out with that oh, uh, Listen, folks, why don't you all go in the other room and have some music? I'll clear the table. Well, I, I guess it's just one of those things, Mr. Hillman. 
The minute I laid eyes on Frances, I knew she was the girl I wanted to marry. But you hardly know each other. You only met, when was it, two months ago? Uh, less than that. Oh, I think it's romantic. Holly, please. Why, Mrs. Hillman and I were engaged a whole year before we were married. That's right, Eddie. Yes, but well, circumstances all the cases. But we don't know anything about you. What do you want to know? Well, don't get me wrong, Eddie. Uh, you, you look like a nice, clean-up, bright young man, but... Well, appearances are sometimes deceiving. She's our own flesh and blood, Mr. Springer. Well, I'm 26, I'm strong and healthy, and I have a good job with this promotion coming up, and I have 1,000 in the bank. 1,000? That, that's not very much, is it? Well, you and Frank were married on a shoestring. Well, times were different then, Ollie. Marriage is a, is a serious business. You said a mouthful. You never know how serious it is until after you've taken the plunge. There are a lot of things you find out about each other after... Why, Frank, you're <clears throat> not insinuating that... No, I... no, I was just making a remark, and I don't see why you two have to rush into this. Can't, can't you wait a while? At least four or five months. But, Mr. Hellman, don't you uh, understand... Francis? Oh, Francis, come on in. All this concerns you. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do, Eddie. If you'll be satisfied to wait, say, oh, three months or so, and if you still want to marry Francis... I'll fix up those two rooms upstairs in front for well, you. And no, uh, thanks, no thanks, Mr. Hillman. Now, don't Hellman, turn I... up your nose until you see them. But don't you understand? I, I've got this big offer in San Francisco. If I pass it up, I'd be missing one of my biggest opportunities. Oh, Eddie, won't there be opportunities for you here? No, not like this one, Francie. I'd have to wait years. Well, a man with brains can make opportunities anywhere. I, I think you're just being contrary. Eddie, but the thought of being torn away from the family, I'd miss them terribly. Well, I, I guess you don't love me as much as you think, Francie. That's about the size of it. Oh, but I do, Eddie. Sure. I'm so confused, Eddie. It's... I know, I know. The whole world's confused. Oh, well, somebody's got to keep his head. You can't be a little girl all your life, Francie. You've got to grow up sometime. You've got to know what you want, and you've got to take your stand. Now... I know what I want. I know I want to marry you because I love you, and I I know I want a home and a family. And I know that job out west is a wonderful opportunity. Well, Art would never have said a thing like that. Art, Art, that's all I've heard of since I came here. Art, he must be a little tin... Well, if he's so wonderful, why didn't Francie marry him? Because I don't love him. Art hasn't a selfish bone in his body. Now I'm selfish. Yes. It strikes me you're the selfish ones. You want to keep Francis all... You want to keep it tied to your apron strings. Now, I... I suppose I can't exactly blame you. She's pretty wonderful, but... Well, you've got to part with her sometime. Oh, well, they're not selfish, Eddie. They're... They're the most wonderful parents in the world. But they're possessive, Francie. They don't want to let go of you. That's not true, Eddie. Oh, good gosh. No matter what I say, I'll land in the doghouse. I came here tonight in a friendly spirit. I... I wanted to meet the family, get acquainted... Let you know how things stood between Francie and me, but everyone took exception to everything I said. I don't know why you can't see my side of the situation. It seems to me that it... Oh, what's the use? I best guess I'd better keep my mouth shut before I step on somebody else's toes tonight. Besides, it's, it's getting late, and well, maybe I'd better go along. Sorry if I blew my top. Well, that's the kind of a guy I am. Yeah, I guess I better be going. Well, Eddie, there's no reason to be all upset. Where's my hat, Francie? It's in the hall. Nice to have met all of you. Good night. Good night. Eddie, wait. Let him go, Ollie. Oh, Francis, Francis, go after him. Stop him. Don't you do it, Francis. Stop butting in, Ollie. Oh, Eddie. Oh, don't cry, Francis. He'll come back. No, he won't. He won't. Oh, I hate you for what you've done tonight. Come on, and sit over here on the swing, Ollie. I'm quite comfortable here, Stella. Sitting there like an owl. Why don't you say something, Ollie? Well, I guess I'm too disgusted to say anything. Disgusted? Yes. The way you acted tonight, Frank, was disgraceful. All that fuss about the picture. Oh, I was so mad I could have brained you with it. You forget your own youth. You lose all sense of romance. Romance? What do you know about romance? You mean because I'm an old maid? Now, Frank, 
Yes, I'm an old maid, all right. And do you want to know why? Because our mother was just as selfish and possessive as you were tonight. Ollie. I don't care. It's the truth. She discouraged any young man who took a fancy to me. She criticized them, picked them to pieces. None of them were good enough. Then when I finally woke up, it was too late. And it was the same with you, Frank. Mother tried to tie you to her apron strings, too. And if you hadn't stood your ground and shown some backbone, well, you'd never have broken away and married Stella. Well, what do you mean? Didn't your mother like me? Well, if you must know, Stella, she didn't. Not at first. Ollie, what's the good of bringing this up well, what now? What didn't she like about me? Well, for one thing, she thought you were flighty. Flighty? Yes, and a little on the bold side, too, on account of those peekaboo waists you used to wear. Bulls! Frank, why didn't you tell me all this? Well, Ollie, I hope you're satisfied. I don't care. I just wanted to make you realize how you were taking the same possessive attitude toward Francie. Oh, Francis, where are you going? After Eddie. Uh, it, it's going to storm any minute. I don't care. Francis? I'm in a hurry. Goodbye, Aunt Ollie. Uh, Francis, don't do anything foolish. I won't. <laughs> Gee, Eddie, I, I hope you don't think I'm bold coming after you like this. I thought you would. That's why I waited here at the corner. Where we go? Oh, I don't care. Oh, I know. Let's take a ride on the subway. <laughs> Where we can get some privacy, huh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> let's take the subway to Columbus Circle. And, well, and then, then let's walk down to Times Square. And then we could go into Child's and have some hotcakes and coffee. I want to take a last look at all of that, Eddie, because... I guess I won't be seeing it for a long time now. Oh, Francie. Francie. This is Hoagy Carmichael again. You know, some people have a way of seeing the sad side of things. No matter what happens, they can usually find something to complain about. If there's nothing to complain about, they usually dig up something to worry about. Now, that's a sad way of doing things. That's a way of bickering and nagging that makes for a lot of unhappiness in a family. And on the other hand, instead of worrying and complaining, there's a bright and hopeful way of looking at difficulties. That's what faith in God can give. That's what the daily practice of family prayer can bring into our homes. It's the hope and happiness of knowing that we have God's help in our family problems. Yes, daily family prayer brings patience and understanding. It brings a new and brighter viewpoint into our lives. It gives unity to a home. For the family that prays together stays together. Before saying goodnight, I'd like to thank Gloria DeHaven and Richard Hart for their performance this evening. And our thanks to Wall Spence for writing tonight's play and to Max Terra for his music. This production of Family Theater Incorporated was directed by David Young. Others who appeared tonight were Sarah Selby, Ruth Parrott, Bernice Barrett, and Jimmy Ogg. Next week, our Family Theater stars will be Victor Jory, Scotty Beckett, and Joan Carroll in Their Only Son. And your host will be Gary Cooper. This is Hoagie Carmichael saying good night, and God bless you. This series of the Family Theatre broadcast is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program and by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need. Be with us next week when our Family Theatre stars will be Victor Jory, Scotty Beckett and Joan Carroll with Gary Cooper as host. Tony Lofrano speaking. This is the mutual broadcasting system.